Welcome back. In this video, we'll take an introduction to Amazon EC2 and then we'll also talk about AMIs or Amazon Machine Images. Amazon EC2 is probably the most popular Amazon service. It's interesting to learn. Let's begin. First of all, let's understand what is Amazon EC2. It stands for Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, also known as Amazon EC2. It provides scalable computing capacity in the AWS cloud. Using Amazon EC2 eliminates the need to invest in hardware upfront so you can develop and deploy applications faster. Instead of focusing on the underlying infrastructure on which the application is going to run, we can focus our time, we can focus our efforts on developing the application. The infrastructure for these applications could be Amazon EC2. We can use Amazon EC2 to launch as many virtual servers as we need, configure security and networking, and also manage storage. Amazon EC2 enables you to scale up or down to handle changes in requirements or spikes in popularity, reducing your need to forecast traffic. Let's talk about some of the features of Amazon EC2. What makes it so outstanding? Amazon EC2 provides virtual computing environments known as instances. When you actually launch a virtual server in EC2, we don't actually call them as servers. We call them as EC2 instances. It provides pre-configured templates for your instances, also known as Amazon Machine Images. For example, if we want to launch a server of type Windows 2012 server, the operating system is already available. We just have to pick that and launch the instance. The template that we use is known as the Amazon Machine Image, and we're going to talk more about this in the next section of this lecture. We have various configurations of CPU, memory, storage, and networking capacity. These configurations are known as instance types. So we have instances that provide more CPU, or maybe more memory, or maybe a combination of more CPU and memory, or even more storage, less of CPU, less of memory. We have these different combinations known as instance types. We are going to speak about instance types in the next video. It provides secure login information for your instances using key pairs. AWS stores the public key and we store the private key. There are two types of storage volumes for Amazon EC2 instances. Storage volumes for temporary data gets deleted when you stop or terminate your instance. This is known as an instance store volume. On the other hand, we could also use persistent storage volumes for the data using Amazon Elastic Block Store, also known as Amazon EBS. We'll talk more about this in one of the upcoming videos. What are the differences between instance store volumes and Amazon EBS volumes? The EC2 instances can be launched at multiple physical locations, known as regions and availability zones. We've already discussed about this in one of the previous lectures. We also have firewalls that enables us to specify the protocols, ports, and source IP ranges that are allowed to reach the instances. These virtual firewalls are known as security groups. We also have static IPv4 addresses known as elastic IP addresses. We can also assign metadata known as tags, which can be created and assigned to the Amazon EC2 resources. Virtual networks can be created, which are logically isolated from the rest of the AWS cloud. Optionally, we could also connect these virtual networks to our corporate on-premises infrastructure as well. These virtual networks are called as virtual private clouds. We are going to discuss in detail what VPCs are and how we can configure them. Next, let's talk about Amazon Machine Images. But before we talk about it, I'm going to show you where do you get that option to select the Amazon machine image? So I've opened up a browser over here. As you can see, I've already signed into AWS. I'm first going to select my service as EC2. You could do that from here by entering the search bar. You can type in EC2 or inside the compute section over here, you have EC2. I'm just going to click on that. And that takes me to the EC2 management console. First up, it shows me a nice dashboard we have some statistics over here. It says I have one key pair and eight security groups. If I wanted to launch an EC2 instance, 
I would click on this button over here, launch instance. Look what step number one says. Step one, choose an Amazon machine image. That is the first step of creating an EC2 instance. So what exactly is an Amazon machine image? Let's understand that. An Amazon machine image, also known as AMI, provides the information required to launch an instance, which is basically a virtual server in the cloud. You specify an AMI when you launch an instance and you can launch as many instances from the AMI as you need. An AMI includes the following. It contains a template for the root volume of the instance. For example, the operating system, application server, and applications. It also contains the launch permissions that control which AWS accounts can use the AMI to launch instances. It also contains a block device mapping that specifies the volumes to attach to the instance when it is being launched. AWS publishes many AMIs that contain common software configurations for public use. In addition, members of the AWS developer community have published their own custom AMIs. You can also create your own custom AMIs. Doing so enables you to quickly and easily start new instances that have everything you need. After you create an AMI, you can keep it private so that only you can use it, or you could also share it with a specific list of AWS accounts. You can also make your AMIs public so the community can use it. Back over here, we are at step one. We have a definition for AMI here as well. It says, an AMI is a template that contains the software configuration required to launch your instance. These are some of the commonly used AMIs. This one is probably one of the most popular ones. This is the Amazon Linux AMI. You have the SUSE Linux AMI. We have the Red Hat Enterprise Linux AMI. We have the Ubuntu Server AMI. Microsoft Windows Server 2016. And you have a few more AMIs over here. The AMI has a number associated with that. It's called as the AMI ID. It also gives you a description of what is contained inside that AMI. This one over here, the Amazon Linux AMI, contains AWS command line tools, Python, Ruby, Perl, and Java. It also includes repositories for Docker, PHP, MySQL, and some other packages. You'll also notice that these AMIs are marked as free tier eligible, which means we can use these AMIs for free, provided your account is in the free tier. If you're just starting out with AWS, I would highly recommend that you check this box over here. That will make sure that you accidentally do not launch an AMI, which is a charged AMI. This will ensure that you always stay in the free tier. On the right hand side over here, you can see if it's a 64-bit or a 32-bit AMI. Also notice, we have the root device type over here. We spoke about the storage for EC2 instances, right? Your EC2 instance may have a instance store volume or a EBS volume. We'll talk more about it. These AMIs over here, they all have EBS volumes. And then you have the virtualization type. We have two types of virtualization, PV, which stands for para-virtualization, HVM, which stands for Hardware Virtual Machine. The type of virtualization indicates how the device actually boots and how it uses special extensions for CPU, memory, and so on. Generally speaking, HVM is always considered to be better than PV, which is para virtualization. If you're looking for customized AMIs, head over to AWS Marketplace. You'll find a lot of different AMIs posted over here. For example, we have AMIs for Splunk, AMIs for Barracuda, Juniper Networks, Cisco Devices, AMIs for Palo Alto, and then we have all these categories over here. You can pick one of those categories and you can check out AMIs which are being provided by different vendors. For example, if I head over to Big Data, we have AMIs from different vendors. Like for example, we have AMI from Splunk, we have AMI from Tipco, Come down over here, we have AMI from Bitfusion, Zoom Data, and so on. Similarly, we could go back over here and try different categories of AMI and search for the required AMIs. Every AMI 
has a specific cost associated with it. For example, if you look at these AMIs over here, you'll notice over here the cost is mentioned. So make sure that you're aware of the cost when you're launching the AMI. If you have created your own AMIs, they are available over here. We'll understand later on how we can create our own AMIs. We'll also understand how we can share our AMIs with other AWS accounts or with the general public. Community AMIs, also a good place to go and search for AMIs. For example, if you're looking for AMIs of a specific operating system, you have checkboxes over here. You may also look for a specific architecture and specific root device storage type. All right, so that's about AMIs. We're going to talk more about AMIs as we progress in the upcoming videos. In the next video, we'll talk about instance types. What are the instance classes and instance families? I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave your comments. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next lecture. Thank you.